See? Ayan. In the airport. What about the airport? Like a Tagalog person greeted me. Uh huh. You should like that. Oh, <laughs> okay. We are live. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Oh boy, what a weak greeting that is. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Are we still asleep? Yes. Are we still asleep? Kobe boy. Okay. Oh, 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 no more. Okay. Well, we've had a little bit of coffee, so we should be awake. Hi. Okay, today is already Wednesday of Holy Week, April 17. April 17. Okay, so today we will continue. We're continuing on the narrative in the gospel of the, uh, the last moments of Jesus. Okay? Jesus' last days. And today in particular, we hear another version of the Last Supper. Yesterday, mm -hmm. yesterday we heard one version, right? I think yesterday was from St. John, if I'm not mistaken, right? St. John's version of the Last Supper. Today we're going to hear about St. Matthew's version of the Last Supper. Okay? And uh, it's slightly different. Slightly different. Yesterday, we heard about how St. Peter nudged St. John and told St. John to ask, you know, Jesus who it was who was going to betray him, right? Today, it's a little different. So, uh, today, um, um, Jesus, uh, how is that again? Jesus says, Amen, I say to you, one of you will betray me. Deeply distressed at this, they began to say to one another, Surely it is not I, Lord. Right? Uh, then he said in reply, He who has dipped his hand into the dish with me is the one who will betray me. So yesterday, uh, we, can, we can try to combine these, these two uh, narratives. Yesterday, St. Peter was asking, hey, Why don't you ask who it is? Right. Uh, so that's why St. John asked Jesus who it is. Right, um, and uh, and Jesus said the same thing. Whoever dips the bread into the, the into the dish with me, <clears throat> and then he goes and tells uh, he goes and tells uh, hi Sydney, good evening. Uh, he goes and tells Judas, okay Judas, do what you need to do, right? But in this one, in this gospel today, apparently they ask themselves, who is it? Who who's gonna betray? Who's gonna betray him? Is it you? Is it you? Is it you? Surely not I, right? Surely not I, right? So, uh, I'm thinking maybe this episode today happened before the episode that we read yesterday, because because uh, if you think about it, maybe it happened this way, right? Jesus said, "One of you will betray me." Huh? Who? Is it you? No, not me. No, you, you, not me. Huh? And then and then maybe Jesus said, "Well, whoever dips uh, into the dish with me." Will be the one to betray me. And then, and then, in between that, Judah says, Judah says, okay, or uh, Jesus says, the Son of Man indeed goes as it is written of him, but woe to that man. Look at this, very strong words of Jesus. Woe to that man uh, by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better for that man if he had never been born. Can you imagine? Boy, what a curse, right? Jesus said it would have been better for that man never to have been born. Then Jesus, here, listen, sorry. Then Judas, his betrayer, said in reply, Oh, surely not I, Rabbi. Then he answered, you have said so. So and then I think it was after this that Jesus told him, okay, now you go and do what you need to do. <clears throat> See? So Jesus knew, okay, what, what are we seeing here? Jesus, of course, knew who it was who was going to betray him. But Judas... The thief, Judas, the liar, Judas, 
has the gall to even challenge Jesus whether Jesus really knew who it was who was going to betray him. He had the gall to challenge Jesus if Jesus actually knew the truth. Right? He was, he was not only trying to pretend that he was not going to be the one. He was not only trying to tell a lie. He was even challenging the truth that Jesus already knew. See? And how did he challenge that? By, you know, cockily saying, oh, surely not I, Rabbi. Right? Now that is the psychology of a liar. That is the psychology of the liar. A liar, a chronic liar, okay, has that kind of mentality. He not only tries to cover up for the truth that he does not want to tell, he doesn't want to say, or he is denying, he even creates a different reality to make other people believe his reality. The reality, the reality he's creating for the consumption of other people so that other people would believe the alternative reality that he has created instead of what the real truth is. See, that is what liars do. The problem with that kind of thing is, see, the problem with that kind of uh, strategy of lying <laughs> which is by the way every liar's tendency okay? when they try to create their own truth somebody who possesses the truth and who knows the truth otherwise when he looks at that al alternative reality being presented to him by the liar he gets busted because the so called reality of a liar is full of holes it is not integral it is full of inconsistencies why because a lie a lie is nothing more than patching up of half truths that do not in the end they do not form a cohesive and integral reality that is why you can puncture holes into a lie and, and find out that it is really nothing but a lie. That is the anatomy of a lie. <laughs> it is, it is a, an alternative to a truth and as it is, it has plenty of inconsistencies. That is why it's very easy to tell whether a person is lying or not. Okay? But, the liar himself is convinced that he is able to piece together an alternative to the truth and try to present it for the consumption of others to believe in. Now, that never works. That never works because you are only fooling yourself. <laughs> you see, when you tell a lie, you're fooling yourself. You're trying to convince yourself of an alternative to the truth. And when you try to present that to people who actually know the truth, you're making yourself appear the fool. See? Because sooner or later, you're always going to get busted. You can never hide a lie. Never. You can never hide it for life. It will always come out one way or the other. So while you might be able to escape telling the truth temporarily, you will never be able to escape it forever. Sooner or later, the truth will always come out one way or the other. Now, what does that make a liar appear to be? If sooner or later the lie is busted and found out, what does that make a liar? What does that make of you? If you lie and you keep lying, Huh? What? <laughs> See, you just destroyed your own reputation, right? 
You're just destroying your own integrity. Nobody is going to believe you anymore. Nobody is going to trust you anymore. Because you have been lying and lying and lying and lying. And, and if you keep lying and people, people find out about the truth anyway, about you and your lies, then sooner or later, nobody's going to trust you anymore. Sooner or later, nobody's going to believe you anymore. Sooner or later, people won't even bother with you anymore. Eh? That is how bad lying is. That is how bad a liar can get. And here we have the very good example of Judas. So look at what happened to Judas. Judas could not even accept his own lie anymore at the end. <clears throat> right? He became desperate to try to recover his, his reputation or his, even his sanity. Because this is what happens to somebody who kept lying and lying his life through. See? He kept stealing from the money bag. That's a form of lie. Not only is it thievery, it's also a lie. Because it's not true anymore, whatever is inside of that. Maybe he kept saying, oh, I gave to the poor. Maybe Jesus was asking, oh, how come this is all that's left in this money bag? And oh, I gave some to the poor. But maybe he bought himself some candy instead, right? <laughs> maybe he bought himself some kind of uh, pleasure-seeking, uh, satisfying, uh, whatever sweets it is. Uh, but he lied to Jesus and said, oh, I gave it to the poor. So he's been used to lying. So his conscience has been so deformed because it's just full of lies instead of truth, instead of reality. See, by the way, what's the definition of truth? It's what's real. Reality is truth. Truth is reality. So if you, if you deny reality, you're telling a lie. See? And reality is what's obviously right there in front of you. If you try to deny that, you're telling a lie. See, that's what a lie is. So what happens to a chronic liar is that he distorts and deforms the way he thinks. There's no consistency anymore in the way that he thinks and sees reality. So in the end, he falls into desperation he, he he cannot keep his sanity intact because he's full of lies and he is not able to see things objectively anymore he can't because objectivity means seeing reality exactly the way it is but if he is so used to lies and to lying he cannot even see uh, reality the way it should be anymore Hi, Annalie. How are you, Louie? <laughs> so, this is what happens to, to a chronic liar. And this is, what happens to, this is what happened to Judas. This is exactly what happened to Judas. So, when Judas could already betray Jesus, okay, that was like the height of all of his lies and all of his wrongdoing. When it came to that point, he could not find in himself a, a, any, any, any strength to even ask for pardon from Jesus anymore. He just had to continue his lie. He just had to be consistent with his lying behavior. And where did that lead him? That led him to desperation, to despair, and then to his own death. Right? Because he thought he could not recover from it anymore. He thought there was no redemption for him anymore. He thought there was no way for him anymore to try to recover all of the, of the uh, integrity he lost because of all of the lies that he has told people. Okay. So that is what happened to Judas. And that is why he ended up taking his own life out of despair. Okay? And that is, of course, the sad end of Judas. Okay, so lesson to learn here. How can we stick to the truth all the time? How can we be truthful in, in the way we think, in, our, in what we say, and in, what, in how we behave? Okay? How can we really live integrity? Integrity is truth. Integrity is, is uh, being whole and, and not have any uh, inconsistencies in our lives. Right? How can we stick to the truth? 
I have a very simple recommendation. And that is, never, 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 ever to say even the smallest, tiniest, itty weeny bit of a lie. Never. Because it's so easy, right? It's so easy to be telling small lies to people. What some people call a white lie. Uh, not really too bad to say this little lie over here or that little lie over there. Well, it is bad. It is bad because little lies lead to big lies. That's just how simple that is. And if we have the habit of telling small lies, we are accumulating a tendency <laughs> to, to be telling some big lies someday, which is going to wreak havoc to our own integrity, to our own person, okay? in many more ways than you can imagine. So honesty, being truthful, is a virtue that will help us both humanly and spiritually. Okay? So we have to make it a very good habit to always tell the truth, tell the truth, tell the truth. Okay? And you have plenty of opportunities to tell the truth all the time. So first, we have to be truthful to ourselves. Number one is to learn how to accept the truth ourselves. Instead of creating lies in our head, let us accept the truth. Number two, let us always tell the truth. Let us always be, be vocal about the truth. Tell things the way they are. Tell things as they are. Okay? And if there are consequences for telling the truth, we have to be man enough, we have to be strong enough to accept the consequences of that truth. If we need to pay up because we did something wrong, then let's be man enough, strong enough, courageous enough to pay up and to make up for the wrong things that we do. Being afraid of the consequences of, of, of a truth okay, is out of character for somebody who wants to abide by the truth all the time. That's why liars are actually cowards. <laughs> liars are cowards because the reason they tell lies is because they cannot face up the consequences to the consequences of truth. Okay? They're cowards. They want to escape responsibility. They want to escape punishment. That's what cowards, that's what liars do. Okay? And we cannot be like that. We cannot be like that. And especially, let us not forget, God always knows the truth. We cannot hide from God. Right? We might be able to temporarily hide the truth from people around us, but God sees everything. God knows everything. So who are you fooling? <laughs> okay? You're only fooling yourselves when you tell lies. Because you cannot escape God. God knows everything. And sooner or later, God's going to make you pay up for your lies. So why even risk it? Why even uh, risk having to tell a lie and suffer the consequences of lying. Just tell the truth. Jesus was the truth, the way, and the life. And he died for the truth. If we are to be followers of Jesus, we have to follow Jesus in truth. Okay? Okay, folks. That's it for us this morning. We got to go to Mass now. Bye. Have a good day, everybody. Hey, Eva, Eva, Eva will say goodbye. Eva, Eva, hi. Hey, Eva, say good morning, Eva. Hello, everybody. Uh-oh, uh-oh. There you go. Okay, bye-bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.